Okay, so quick mini lesson on finding an angle, finding a side. We'll stick to tangent ratio because that's what this section is. But it would be the same for any any section, any any trig ratio required. If we have a triangle that is a right triangle, so let's say it looks like this. You might want to draw that. You can probably draw it better than I just did. Let's say we don't know what this angle is, but we're going to call it angle M. Okay? So let's say that's angle M. But let's say we do know that this was 7 and this was 5. Let's say that we know those two sides of a triangle. <clears throat> if you know two sides, so I'm going to put in brackets here. I'm going to put finding an angle given to sides, okay? That's probably a better, more full title for it, finding an angle if you're given two sides. Now, I just told you that this was going to involve the tangent ratio, but if you're trying to find an angle, you need to first decide which trig ratio you're going to use. Since I gave you these two sides, why would that suggest that you might want to use the tangent ratio? Which sides do you have in relation to this angle? You got the opposite and the adjacent, right? Opposite and adjacent side. Okay, remember remember labeling this? Opposite and this is adjacent. We don't have the hypotenuse here, so we don't need that. So we want the, we want the trig ratio that has opposite and adjacent. Remember that formula sheet I gave you from the Math 10 exam? It has all those three listed. It has what the tangent ratio is. It has what the sine ratio is and what the cosine ratio is. So you're first going to decide if you want kind of steps or how to think about it here. Choose appropriate ratio. Choose appropriate ratio. So for us, that's tangent, right? Because we have opposite and adjacent. Number two, you got to write some kind of a trig equation. Write trig equation. This is what a trig equation looks like. A trig equation looks like tangent of something equals something over something else. Okay, that's a simple trig equation from a right angle triangle. So we got three things there. In fact, I will even use a highlighter to create the three little boxes. So we got tangent of something equals something over something else here. Okay, let's even use three different colors just to make it really fancy. Where do I find each of those three things? Tangent of some angle. What's the angle? We don't know yet, right? Does it have a name though? What's the name of the angle we're looking at? M, right? So you put an M here. You say tangent of M equals, do we know the yellow and the pink thing? From the picture. What goes on top of this fraction if we're trying to write the trig ratio? Can I write the tangent ratio for that triangle? Yeah, what is it? What's the what goes in the yellow box? Five, right? And seven goes in the other one. So if the color is just freaking you out too much, here's what it looks like without the colors. That's a trig equation right there, okay? Tangent of some angle is something over something. The third step is, so this was this was one, this was two. Once you write a trig equation, your step's going to be solve for the unknown. If you have tangent of, let's just move this out of here. Um, if you have tangent of m equals 5 sevenths, this is the ratio. And we need to find the angle, right? If we want to find the angle and given the ratio, which button do we use on our calculator? Which function do you use? Go back up above there to all that stuff you wrote down. Which one takes the ratio and gives you the angle? Which button? The tangent button? Tangent, tangent inverse button? Which one? The inverse button takes the ratio and gives you the angle, right? Takes the ratio, gives you the angle. You need to know the difference, right? The inverse tangent button is going to take the ratio and give you the angle. 
So if I want to find the angle, I'm going to go, the angle is going to be, if I go 5 divided by 7, and then I do tangent inverse of that. This is a good way to write it. If you start with this equation, the way you solve that is by doing that, okay? So this is this is solving for the unknown, showing how to find the unknown. And then step four, I guess, is the uh, answer, right? If you go to your calculator, this is not going to give you an exact answer. It's going to be some decimal. We're going to round it off. So calculator's right here. Again, some of you were having troubles because you were in uh, the wrong mode. You've got to be in degree mode because we're using degrees. You can do it two ways on your calculator depending on what kind of calculator you have. If you have a calculator that shows the buttons you're pushing as you go, you might want to do it all in one step. So you find the tangent inverse function, put a bracket there if it doesn't give you one. Five divide by seven. Okay. You can do it all in one step if you want, depending on your calculator, because if you hit enter here, it gives you 35.5 degrees, roughly. 35.5. Notice that i got to put a roughly equal to sign here because I'm rounding this off. Why do I not have to put a roughly equal to sign for this? Have I rounded it off yet at that point? It's exactly equal to whatever that is on the calculator. Okay? You want to do all those things. Decide on the trig ratio based on the sides you have, opposite and adjacent. Write the trig equation. Solve the trig equation and then actually write down what the answer is. It'd be good if you got in the habit of showing those, you know, that much in your solutions. On your calculator, again, you could do it. If you wanted to do it one step at a time, you might go 5 divided by 7 equals and then do tangent inverse of that. Most calculators have a way of not having to punch it all in again. On this calculator, it says answer right here. If you really want to, you can go 0 0.71428529. And so on. But you should put a lot of decimals in there so that you don't like put as many as the calculator shows to get that angle. Don't just round it off and say, uh, it's, I'll put... I'll put tangent inverse of 0.7, that's good enough. Because your angle is going to be wrong then, right? Because if you round off and then use a rounded off number to find more things, it gets farther and farther away, so don't do that. But you could do, you could go, again, if you have a calculator, you can go 5 divided by 7, and then tangent inverse of that number of answer or whatever. Are we okay with that? That's finding an angle. Okay, we need to we need to think about how to find a side as well, which we'll do right